Now I want to show you guys some of the basics for using crayfish for river fishing for smallmouth bass and other game fish. I did this for at least three years straight and then after that I continued to do it on and off. Um, the main method that I used was drifting the crayfish along the bottom. So I would uh, hook the crayfish usually in the tail. I'd use different hooks, sometimes Aberdeen, sometimes bait holder, sometimes octopus, um, depending on what I felt like using that day or what I had really. All of them worked pretty well. And then I'd uh, have a six pound test leader usually. I have eight today, but usually I'd like six pound test so I can cast it further. And then I'd have the least amount of split shot I can get away with. And usually that would be no split shot because I'd use heavier crayfish and I'd use the weight of the crayfish to cast it out into the middle of the run. But today I have small crayfish so I have just a little bit of split shot on there. Another method people commonly use, instead of putting split shot on the line, they'll stick a float on the line and drift the crayfish maybe a foot under the float or a foot and a half just through the middle of the run so it's just floating in the middle of the water. Both methods work really well. Um, I've had success with both methods. I've caught a lot of smallmouth bass over the years uh, drifting crayfish like this. Even though I normally tail hook my crayfish, which just means that you take the hook point, stick it through the hard part of the tail right there, right where it meets the meat, and then drift them like that. There's actually two other good ways to hook these crayfish, and I want to show you that quickly. One of them, uh, both of them actually, you have to be careful not to kill the crayfish by prying too hard. But one of them is you stick it right underneath the, the carapace right there and pop it back out really gently. You can see the crayfish is still alive, so I didn't, I didn't damage all its internal organs and stuff. That's what you want to try not to do. The other method of hooking these crayfish, besides the end of the tail and the back of the carapace, is going straight through the nose. And you want to be careful with this one, especially not to hook through the brain, so you want to do it as far forward as you can while still getting a good hook in there. It's kind of difficult on a small crayfish like this though. There we go. See, he's still alive, but I got him hooked up through the nose there. So when I'm doing this in practice, what I'll usually do is I'll take the crayfish, hook it in the tail like this. Sometimes I'll rip a claw off to make him look more uh, vulnerable to the fish, like that. Sometimes I'll rip two claws off. I'll take him, I'll sort of lob him out there into the middle of the run. This runs a bank run that's on my side so I really don't have to cast very far and then I'll just let him drift and he'll sort of you'll sort of feel him click along the bottom the one thing you want to watch out for is if he's a more lively crayfish he'll start crawling under the rocks so especially when you first start fishing with the crayfish you want to keep dragging him a little bit sometimes just so he uh, he uh, stays out of the rocks and doesn't snag you up but once he starts to, starts to sort of like just barely wiggle his legs after you reel him in and recast him a couple of times, then um, you don't have to drag him around as much because he'll, he'll stop crawling under the rocks. That's the main trick to doing this. Uh, you can do this with Helgramites also, Mad Tom, Shiners, Minnows, uh, a whole bunch of different uh, invertebrates and bait fish. And it works great with Mad Toms and Helgramites, even better than... Uh, with uh, crayfish. My favorite three are um, Mad Toms are probably number one, Helgramites are number two, and Molting Crayfish are number three. And then things like Nightcrawlers and, uh, and uh, regular crayfish are far distant after those three. If you have tension in the line and it goes slack, you want to wait a moment and then set the hook. If you have the opposite case where you have slack in the line and it starts to go tight, 
then you want to wait a moment and set the hook. If you feel a really sharp tap while you're holding your line, or if you just feel it through the rod, you want to wait a moment and then set the hook. If you see the line just jump a little bit, you want to wait a moment and then set the hook. Those are all the ways you know you have a bite. And uh, I'll show you some clips from these old videos that I made because I don't think this video would be uh, complete without showing you some fish. There we go. Doing a bit of smallmouth bass bait fishing today. Just drifting a small crayfish right now. Got a fall fish. Figured I'd get into some of these too. That's all right though. Nice little fall fish. Got another one on. This one's tugging a little better. I'm just drifting uh, these crayfish right through that that edge of that current break there. This one might be a bass. He's tugging pretty good. Yep, it's a nice little smallie. Awesome. That's what I'm looking for. And just a small one, but fought so much harder than that fall fish. Grab them here. Here we go. You know, 12, 13 incher, but I'll take it. Thought I had something on. The line went slack for a moment. That usually means either your your drift fell out of the current or uh, a fish picked it up. So I gave him a moment to eat it, and it was a fish. That's pretty cool. I, I was pretty convinced it was the line fell slack though, out of the current at first. But I'm happy it's a fish. Oh, it's a fall fish, shoot. <laughs> pretty big one, wow. Look at that, that's a beauty fall fish. Caught a lot of these guys longer than the state record, but none heavy enough yet. That's a beauty fall fish, man. 18, 19 incher. The state record was 19. This one's probably around 19. Somewhere around there. It's a real nice one. There's a nice little stack of fall fish or something right in that part of the current break. This is a little guy. Really little guy. Yeah, another fall fish. That's what I figured. These guys are really vicious. The way they eat, they just they just slam it like a creek chub does. Yeah, another little guy. Pretty sure I'm getting a bite right now. You can tell when the tension and the slack are, are like fluctuating. In these little jumps, if you feel the line, that's usually a bite. See how the line's going up and down really fast? It does that slower when it's tumbling. Yep, there's a fish. Got this one on a Helgramite. Another little fall fish, hey, shoot. Tons of little fall fish. There he is. <laughs> Really slippery. There he is. Another Helgramite fish. Feels small again, shoot. <laughs> Barely bending the rod. I don't even gotta pump him. He's not taking drag. Another tiny fall fish. Ruined my Helgramite too, you jerk. Lots of fall fish. There we go, got another one.
Probably another fallfish because they, they just can't stay away from them. Yeah, it is another fallfish. Jeepers, creepers. Another nice one. Wow. That last one was just a hair under 18, that last bigger fallfish. This is another real beauty. It might be even bigger. Yeah, whoa, shoot. I haven't fished in months. I, my fish grabbing skills are not as good as they used to be. Just trying to, these things are fragile, so I'm trying, trying not to stick my hands in the wrong places. Fragile and spunky. That one's probably even bigger. That one might be a legitimate 19. That's a really nice one. Really nice one.